it is the am and I haven't slept yet. Maybe love that for me. Hey guys, it's Yaka Design It's Me. Welcome back to Design It's Me Daily, where we design our own clothes, we design our own business, and we design our own lives. It is currently 3.20 a.m. It is Vlogmas Day 8 or 9. I apologize for the mix-up, but if I'm being very honest, I have begun to lose track. The amount of videos, the amount of backs of footage that I'm currently editing simultaneously for a bunch of different videos, I've really, really just lost track at this point. So you guys just kind of bear with me. The last video that I posted was my vision board video from Vlogmas Day 7. And before that, I believe it was the Christmas tree shopping haul where we did the decorations and the decorations wasn't enough. <sighs> a lot has happened since then. My four-year-old, Aidan, if you guys are new here, I have two sons. One is four years old, his name is Aidan. The other is five months old at the time of filming this video. And my four-year-old just kind of does whatever he wants. Um, he believes me sometimes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. he bullies me sometimes and um, all of the lovely decorations that we would have put on the tree the decorations that you guys see on the tree um, for the introduction to every video my vlog was intro he broke all of those ornaments every last ornament that we put on the tree the next day he took them off and that was it yeah mm -hmm. so this video is in direct connection to the new route that we have decided to take for the theme of our Christmas tree. No more ornaments, no more things that can break, no more anything that isn't child proof or child safe. I'm over it. 100% over it. We're about to make some bows, we're about to make some, as I call it, child proof soft decor for your Christmas tree. We are about to jump into it. Every single decoration that I make is going to be either made out of fabric, made out of something soft, and is impossible to break. Because the hazards, maybe we're not coming into agreement with anything hazardous or anything that could potentially hurt our children, regardless of the fact that they put their own selves in harm's way by being too curious, but that is besides the point. Let's go ahead and jump into today's video. We're about to create some very, very giant bows made out of muslin. The theme and the direction that I'm going with this tree, now that my children do not appreciate my efforts in giving them a lovely tree, this tree is going to be very, very in line with my company. When I look at the tree, I'm going to feel very, very inspired by what I do and what my business is about. And that is just what it's going to be very very neutral tones and we're just kind of going to go with it for the most part all of these bows are going to be made out of muslin because muslin is a fabric that i am constantly using 24 7 whether it's for samples prototypes etc um so it was just very very fitting for you know the the direction that we are now going relative to the theme of this tree so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into today's video if you guys are new here, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm just laying out the things that I'm going to need for my boards. I have my muslin fabric, my fabric scissors, and my measuring tape. And here's the fun thing about muslin. Muslin is 100% cotton. It is the rawest form of cotton. And therefore, when you are cutting, so long as it's a straight line that you're cutting, you aren't required to cut along the entire fabric. You simply snip and rip. It's law for muslin to rip along the grains of the fabric and so you're always going to end up with a straight line which is what i am doing right here i just snipped and now i'm ripping this rectangular piece of fabric measures seven inches in width and i just kept it the length of the muslin which is 60 inches and i'm simply going to construct by folding 
my fabric in half I'm making sure that the edges are touching one another I'm starting from the corner of the folded edge and I'm simply stitching in a diagonal line because that is how I want the edges of my bows to be finished off that is the shape that I want the edges of my bows to have and I'm just stitching a half inch away from the edge along the entirety of my muslin strip but I'm making sure and you guys are going to see in a short moment when I get to sort of like the middle of my strip I would have left about two or three inches open and that opening is so that I can turn my strip inside out So I'm stitching and when I get to the end of my muslin I'm making sure to finish it off the exact same way that I would have started it so that the both edges are going to be shaped the exact same way I'm gonna do this exact same thing to all of the other strips and in total I would have cut enough muslin for about six or seven bows in total. I'm just going to press out each of my strips one by one, making sure to add enough seam. And that is the general rule. Once you stitch, you want to make sure that you are pressing every time you stitch, you press, every time you stitch, you press. And that way you end up with nice clean seams, which really, really adds to the quality of your work. Now all I'm doing is folding my fabric and you'll just kind of follow along as to how I'm folding it. I'm folding it to create this shape. I'm going to pinch the center, making sure to sandwich all of that together. And I'm just grabbing some masking tape and I'm going to tape the center to keep everything nice and sealed together. Even though the tape is not going to be our final finish, it is very, very important just to make sure that you like the shape that you see. If you don't like it, you can always take it out and redo it. But this just holds everything temporarily in place. So I'm just going to do this exact same thing to all the other bows and then we're going to take it to the table where we are going to add some nice crystal gems and finish it off the way we really want to finish it off.
so i just wanted to give you guys a better view of how i was folding the bow i did this crisscross type of thing almost like one of those ribbons you know those ribbons that you always see like for cancer like the different colors and they mean different things that is how you want to crisscross your ribbon you bring the top to meet the center you sink it in and then you pinch the two sides and it should end up like this so i just wanted to give you guys a better view as to the folding process tape all the way around like so i like what i see so i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep this this shape all right guys just a reminder the tape is a temporary uh holder for playing around with the shape once you like what you see you can keep it if you don't like what you see you can do it over all right so i went ahead and created the exact same way i would have created the band for the bows itself i created a smaller version with a strip of fabric that finished at one inch and this is what i am cutting and wrapping on the center and i'm just securing it with some glue I'm using these gems just for that little blinged out element and it's gonna look really really lovely when the light hits it as well the bows are pretty plain like it's just made out of muslin so a little gem or two was the ideal thing to just take it up a notch but of course you guys could decorate it however you feel like decorating it if you will like it I love it but this is just how I decided to decorate mine All right, so this is the finished bow this is how we are looking i'm just gonna grab a piece of wire and i'm not exactly sure what size or what gauge this wire is it's just a very very fine wire and i would have cut about uh, six inches of wire um off of the roll all right so you want a piece of wire that measures six inches in length and i'm just going to run the wire through or run the, run the wire under that band and this is what I'm going to use to attach uh, my bows to the tree All right so that is about it guys I really really enjoyed creating these bows perfect alternative perfect uh, decor if you have children and if you really want really want to uh, maintain a kiddie friendly uh, environment for your kids all of the decorations that I put on my tree all of the ornaments that I put on my tree are very very childproof and kiddie friendly we did keep some of the ornaments some of the balls so I'm really really just hoping that my son does not attack the tree this time uh, but all in all, I really, really love how this tree turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed and of course, I will see you guys in my next one.